Hi, my name is Katie, and I'm making a first-person stylish action game. It's like if Metal Gear Rising Revengeance and Half-Life had a sapphic enemies to lovers arc. The core experience that I want to deliver is a feeling of mastery and control over chaotic situations. Here's the plan on how I want to execute that. The player has a few weapons that they can switch between. Switching between weapons can save time and skip animations, encouraging combination attacks. There are also more explicit combos, based on damage types and other factors. The player also has several abilities that they can mix into the combos, such as parrying, melee attacks with the Spaz-12 shotgun, a super attack with a water jet cutter, and more. You can also perform a dodge, which gives you iframes. The game also has Source Engine style air control, allowing you to rocket jump like his TF2. You can also surf up slopes and all that jazz. What? So how far along am I in bringing this to life? Not super far. I have done some pretty cool stuff so far, however, that I would love to show you. The first thing I implemented was movement. The whole reason I broke into game dev in the first place is actually the Steam Guide that goes into technical detail about Source Engine air strafing. I learned the linear algebra required to understand it from 3 Blue 1 Brown's Linear Algebra series, which is insanely good, single-handedly made me love math again, and Freya Homer's Math for Game Dev stream series, where I got started with programming from taking stabs at the simple assignments in that series. If you're getting into game dev, I would highly, highly recommend these two series. The great thing about implementing air strafing is that it's almost entirely just about the math. It's relatively simple to implement, as long as you can reason about the math itself and learn how to interface with the engine on a basic level. The code for walking on the ground was much more difficult and required a bit more complicated math, but this video is going to focus more on the design aspect and the major roadblocks I hit. Actually, I've been thinking about making another game just about the movement I've made in this game, because while movement isn't the core focus of the gameplay loop, I accidentally made it really fun. So who knows, I might make something out of that. Let's see what else we can do. I implemented some code to make ramp sliding work properly. I added a UI with resizable windows just because it's fun. And I implemented weapons. Three times. This is a problem I've run into. The instinct to constantly refactor and rewrite your code as you get better as a programmer instead of actually making progress. Probably would be a lot less of an issue if I weren't doing this solo. But when working alone, I'm just never satisfied with the code I've written, because I'm always learning more about programming. In any case, weapons have finally been fully implemented, and you can perform some basic combos with them. There's a special draw animation for when you draw a weapon, and there isn't a round chamber. It's much, much faster than the firing animation and the chambering animation that follows, but constantly switching weapons is heavily encouraged. Because I want to punish players as little as possible for switching weapons, your progress in reloads is preserved when you holster the weapon, and the reload animation resumes from where you left off when you draw it again. Weapons also automatically chamber around and eventually reload themselves if holstered for long enough. And I'm planning on adding an active reload mechanic where you can time inputs during a reload animation to execute a devastating blood charged attack. That reminds me, I haven't mentioned anything about the world or plot of this game project. That isn't the focus of this video, so to summarize, I'm going for a spaghetti western steampunkish vibe with eldritch blood magic and sapphic romance. There's an alternative variation of the story that's near future hard sci-fi, but I don't really have the resources to bring that one to life yet. So I decided to make an alternate universe version for this game project, just so that I can play around with the actual game mechanics. Plus I just find the vibe fun. Speaking of, let's go over the slated arsenal of the player. All of these models are probably temporary. The stake gun is a massive bolt-action construction device that shoots metal stakes. You can hold and release the alt-fire key to launch a glob of the gun's coolant at varying speeds, which bounce off the ground and enemies. They only have one bounce off the ground, but they can bounce again if they hit an enemy. It's not super special by itself, however, there are some high damage combos that I'll talk about later. The shotgun shoots beads of explosive fluoridating gel in a horizontal spread, like the Mastiff from Titanfall 2. Its alt-fire shoots a rocket-like glob of gel that explodes on contact, allowing you to knock enemies into the air to set them up for air combos, or launch yourself into the air. The revolver shoots lightning bolts. The alt-fire simply lets the player fan the hammer, allowing the player to empty the cylinder in quick succession, or either having to wait for the reload, or, ideally, switching to another weapon to continue the combo. The lightning bolts deal greater damage to enemies impaled by stakes from the stake gun. In addition, Shooting a glob of coolant from the stake gun causes a massive high damage explosion. The damage is increased depending on if the player skipped the glob off the ground, and if it hit an enemy before being shot. 
as well as if the player parried the cloud. The Tile Messer is a sword and scabbard. Not implemented yet, but it's slated to have numerous abilities depending on if it's sheathed, if you use the warp pick shaped pawn wall to bludgeon your enemies, if it's unsheathed, where it'll deal more damage depending on how high your combo meter is, and if you've thrown it into the environment to do some stuff like area denial or something, where you'll switch to close quarters combat. This is the most ambitious of the weapons, and honestly may be too complicated, so I don't expect anything about it to end up in the final game. I just think it's neat. In any case, that's about it for what I've got done so far. I've been really busy with life stuff, so progress has been slow, but I've grown so much as a programmer and game developer over the course of working on this project, I'm excited to see where it goes next. Thank you for watching. Oh, and before I go, I have to thank a few of the people who helped me get to where I am now. Thank you, Hectech, for helping me learn the ropes and set my project in the right direction. Thank you, Charlie, for contributing some code and teaching me lots of wonderful things about programming. Thank you, Shinuba and Gawi, for helping me with a bunch of stuff, but especially with some physics stuff that was giving me a headache. And a big thank you to everyone I forgot because my brain has holes in it.